hello everyone welcome back to my channel study with me today i'm going to explain another examples of prediction questions of ib chemistry paper 2 higher level it is not 100 percent guaranteed this question will appear in the exam instead you can treat these questions as a mock exam to check whether you're ready for the exam or to check what kind of topic that you're still struggling with if you find this video is helpful, please don't forget to subscribe and let your other friend know about my channel to support me. And let's get started. Lithium metal is known to react vigorously with water. Write a balance equation for the reaction. So lithium metal that would be solid when it reacts with water liquid will produce LeOH aqueous and hydrogen gas. So we need to balance them. So this will be 2, this will be 2, and this will be 2 as well. State the block of the periodic table where lithium is found. Lithium is found in the group 1, so it's S block. So group 1 and 2 is block, and start from 3 until 8, it's P. And then transition metal will be D block. If the resulting pH of the solution is 13.7D, calculate the concentration of the lithium product form in reaction A. So to calculate the uh, concentration of lithium product form, so we can uh, actually calculate the uh, H plus first because pH is known. So H plus will be 10 to the power negative pH, which is 10 to the power negative 13.70. So that would be 10 times to the power negative 14. So this is the concentration of H plus and to find the um, lithium product that would be LiOH so this would be Li plus and then OH minus so by finding the concentration of OH minus we can actually find the uh, concentration of LiOH so now as we know the concentration of H plus we can find the concentration of OH minus so kw divided by concentration of h plus you know the constant is 1 times 10 to the power negative 14 so divided by 2 times 10 to the power negative 14 which is 0 0.5 mole per decimeter cube so this one also will be concentration of lioh because it has the same coefficient so concentration of OH minus it's uh, the same with concentration of LiOH so the concentration of LiOH is 0 0.5 mole per decimeter cube if the volume of the solution is equal 1.5 uh, decimeter cube calculate the mass of solid Li required to reach a pH of 13.70 so now we need to find the mole of LiOH so that would be C times V C we know it's 0 0.5 from this uh, question so 0 0.5 times V it's 1.5 so that would be 0 0.75 mole and mass uh, would be N times MR so that would be 0 0.75 times Li which is 6. 94 so that would be 5.21 gram li why we have the same amount of mole for li and lioh based on this equation the mole of lioh will be the same with the mole of li because it has the same coefficient if an equivalent mass of lithium oxide was at to the same volume of water Calculate the new pH of the solution and whether this results in more or less H plus concentration in solution compared to pH 13.70 for Li in water. So when lithium oxide add or dissolve in water, it will produce lithium hydroxide. So now the mass of lithium hydroxide, sorry, the mass of lithium it should it's the same with lithium oxide because equivalent mass right to the same volume of water so now we can find first mass of lithium oxide 
which is 5.21 divided by its molecular mass 29.88 which is 0 0.174 mole so this is the same with the mole of um sorry it should be times two because li2o is one liOH is two so times two that would be 0 0.348 mole of LiOH, okay? So now we need to find the new concentration with this number of mole. So the mole is 0 0.348 divided by 1.5 decimeter cube because it mentioned the same volume of water. So the volume of water is 1.5 decimeter cube and you will get 0 0.2 three two mole per decimeter cube so this would be oh minus because lioh so lioh when it dissociates will produce one oh so the concentration of oh minus is 0 0.232 mole per decimeter cube so now we can find concentration of h plus one times 10 to the power negative 14 divided divided by this concentration to find the ph through the concentration of H+, plus, which is 4.35 times 10 to the power negative 14. So the pH will be negative log 4.35 times 10 to the power negative 14. That would be 13.36. This is the new pH when you add the same amount of lithium oxide, which is 5.20 gram, to the same volume of water, which is 1.5 decimeter cubed. Describe the bonding structure that exists in solid lithium. Lithium or cation lattice with delocalized electron. So metal exists as a lattice of cations where the unbound electrons are free to move throughout the lattice. Describe the bonding structure that exists in solid lithium oxide. It's ionic crystal lattice composed of Li plus ions and O2 minus ions. So lithium and oxygen are bonded ionically via electrostatic attraction between the opposite charges forming a 3D lattice of alternating ions in the solid state. So it could be ionic crystal, crystal lattice composed of Li plus ions and O2 ions that are, that is um, bonded ionically via electrostatic attraction. Lithium can also bond to acetate ions, CaCOO minus, a weak base. Calculate Kb for the acetate ion, CH3COO minus, if pKa for CH3COOH is 4.76. So Ka will be 10 to the power pKa, which is 10 to the power negative 4.76. So 1.74 times 10 to the power negative 5. So Kb, Kw divided by Ka, which is 1 times to the power negative 14, divided by 1.75 times 10 to the power negative 5. So it's 5.75 times 10 to the power negative 10. Calculate the initial concentration of the acetate ions if 1.5 gram of lithium acetate is added to 1 decimeter of water. So, when the lithium acetate is at the CH3COOLI solid is at to water, so it will produce CH3COO minus plus Li plus, right? So, here we can first find the mole of uh, CH3COOLI or lithium acetate. 1.5 divided by its molecular mass which is 65.99 then you get 0 0.0227 mole 
that would be the same with mole of CH3 COO minus. So the concentration would be N divided by V. So N is 0 0.022, 0 0.0227 divided by 1, which is 0 0.0227 mole per decimeter cube. Uh, this concentration of uh, CH3 COO minus. Using, using the KB calculated in H and the initial concentration of acetate ion in I, calculate the concentration of either set ions at equilibrium if 1.5 gram of lithium acetate is at 2, 1 decimeter of water. So CH3 COOH, when it at or dissolve in the water, it will form CH3 COOH and then OH minus the initial concentration of acetate ions because that's the question so now because it produced oh minus that would be kb so the product ch3 cooh times oh minus divided by ch3 coo minus so this will be uh 0 0.0227 right from the previous question okay and we don't know how many mole that will react and we don't know how many for OH minus as well so that would be zero sorry x squared okay this and this and then divided by 0 0.0227 minus X, x which is 5.75 times 10 to the power negative 10 as a concentration of OH minus. Copper 2 chloride can exist as an hydrous solid or hydride. A 1.78 gram of some sample co copper 2 chloride hydrate was heated on a watch glass until the blue solid changed completely to brown and the following data was recorded so only the watch glass 24.57 and at by the mass of copper 2 chloride hydrate which is that would be 26.35 gram right and then after uh, five minutes heating the uh, mass becomes 26.03, so there is not much change of the mass. And then adding more 5 minutes becomes 25.99. And then, and then add more 2 minutes becomes 25.99. So there is not much difference after heating 2 more minutes. So the question is, suggest a reason why the sample was heated for a second 5 minutes increment showing a mass change because um, not all of the water removed in the first five minutes because when heated the water molecules that distributed throughout the lattice is released from the lattice steam if the time is not long enough so some water still remain Calculate the mass of anhydrous copper 2 chloride. Do not include the calculation of uncertainties in your work. So the CuCl2 mass is 25.99. And then the mass of watch glass is 24.57. So the mass of the copper chloride would be 25.99 minus 24.57. So it's four, one point. 42 grams so this without water after water all remove or evaporate calculate the mass of water in the hydrated copper to chloride sample so h2o mass would be 1.78 right because this is hydrate so 1.78 minus 1.78 42 gram anhydrous which is 0 0.36 gram 
calculate the percent uncertainties on the mass of water in the copper 2 chloride sample. So we need to find the mass of CuCl2, which is 25.99, 0 0.01 minus 24.57, and with uncertainty 0 0.01, which is 1.42, and the uncertainties will be 0 0.02 because you will add this two. And now for water, that would be 1.78 plus minus 0 0.01 minus 1.42, 0 0.02. So that would be 0 0.36 gram plus minus 0 0.0 T. So percentage uncertainty would be 0 0.03 divided by 0 0.36 times 100, which is 87%. Determine the chemical formula for the copper 2 chloride hydrate from the experimental data. For NH2O would be 0 0.36 gram times 1 mole per 18.02 gram. Then we get 0 0.02 mole and for CuCl2 that would be 1.42 times 1 mole divided by 134.45 gram which is 0 0.011 mole so NH2O divided by NCUCl2 which is 0 0.02 divided by 0 0.011 it's 2 so the uh, chemical formula for the copper 2 chloride hydrate will be CuCl2 to H2O. State the chemical name of the copper 2 chloride hydrate from this experiment. The name is copper chloride chloride dihydrate because it's 2. So 2 it's di. State the core electron configuration for copper copper with the uh, electron number 29 so that would be 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 3p6 4s2 3d9 but this cannot be accepted because it should be fulfilled so i would just use this short notation so that should be 4s1 3d10 so it should be fulfilled or half fill in case you get 4s2 3d4 this should be 4s1 3d5 this half fill okay copper is known to exist in complex ions one such of complex ion is cuh2062 plus state the molecular geometry around the central metal ion and the type of bonding that exists between the cu2 plus and the ligands the type of the uh, bond of course it's a co or Dinate covalent bond, right? That is the type of the bond between transition metal and ligands. And then for the um, molecular geometry, as we know, Cu is attached to 6H2O, OH2, 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 OH2. So there are six, so that would be octa. So this two plus right so that would be octahedra when cuh 2062 plus reacts with ammonia and h3 the color changes from light to dark blue explain the cause of this color change using section 3 and 15 of the data booklet because from the spectrochemical uh, series ammonia spectrochemical series Ammonia is higher, or ammonia is stronger. So the reason is ammonia is higher on the spectrochemical series, which causes increases splitting in the d orbital, thus energy of the absorb light is 
increase, increase. When a transition metal is in an ion form, the d orbital energy is split where the energy difference between these orbitals enables absorption of energy in the visible range corresponding to the energy difference. So the properties of ligands in the transition metal complex ion can change this energy. The reaction of hydrochloric acid HCl with oxygen gas O2 exists in equilibrium according to the following equation. Deduce the express for the equilibrium constant Kc for the reaction of HCl with O2. So that would be the product to the power its coefficient divided by reactant to the power of the coefficient. The following quantities of the chemical species were added to a closed reaction vessels. Calculate the reaction quotient, which is Q. Q uh, is calculated the same like Kc, but it includes concentration that might not reach equilibrium uh, yet. So that would be, so I would just plot the number, yeah, it will be the same like this. So that would be 0 0.2 squared times 0 0.01 squared, okay, and then 0 0.8 to the power 4. And 0 0.2, that would be 4.9 times 10 to the power negative 5. If the Kc of the reaction is 7.2 times 10 to the power negative 8, which is smaller than Q, deduce with a reaction if the reaction in B is at equilibrium, and if it's not equilibrium, which way it must shift to reach this state. It's obviously is not at the equilibrium because Q is not the same with Kc. Q is bigger than Kc, so Q bigger than Kc, where the cost products, concentration of product is bigger than reactants, causing the reaction shift to the reactant because concentration of product is bigger than reactants, so to minimize the change, it will shift to the left. So the reaction is not at equilibrium. The reaction of HCl with oxygen is exothermic. If the temperature is increased to 100 degrees Celsius, deduce which direction the equilibrium will shift and state the effect on the Kc value. So for HCl, plus O2, let me just maybe do it here, so for HCl plus O2, produce 2H2O and 2Cl2, and the uh, delta H is negative, which is exothermic, so this way forward will be mm. exo, because it's negative, and then this will be uh, endothermic, okay? So when the temperature increases, when the temperature when the temperature increases, the reaction is endothermic as it absorbs the energy. Okay? So when the temperature increases, it will absorb the energy, right? So it is an endothermic. So the reaction will favor endothermic. It means the reaction shift left, the yield decreases, Kc decreases. So because favor endothermic, so it will shift to left and the yield will decrease because the reaction shift to left and when the yield decrease kc will also decrease using section 11 of the data booklet calculate the enthalpy change delta h for the reaction of hcl with o2 in kilojoule so that will be average bond enthalpy so this for hcl for hcl plus o2 
to h o h right so that would be 4 o h plus 2 c l c l so 4 times 431 plus 498 4 times 463 plus 2 times 242 this would be 2 2 2 2 this would be 2 3 3 6 so delta h would be 2 2 2 2 minus 2 3 3 6 which is negative 114 kilojoule the reaction of HCl with O2 was performed experimentally with a measure enthalpy change equal to negative 125 kilojoule per mole. But the one that we just got is negative 114 kilojoule. So why the delta H value diverse, dif differ from tho those determined in E? Because bond enthalpy is calculation R average calculate gifs free energy delta g in kilojoule per mole for the reaction with a state kc at 25 degrees celsius equal to 7.2 times 10 to the power negative a and state whether this reaction is spontaneous or not so the formula is delta g negative rt ln k so that would be negative 8.31 times 2.9 because this is 298 times ln 7.2 times 10 to the power negative 8 will be 40,728 J per K mole or 40.73 kilojoule per K mole. So this one is non-spontaneous because delta G is positive. With Gibbs free energy calculated in G, and delta H is negative 125 kilojoule per mole, calculate the entropy in J per K mole at 25 degrees Celsius. So delta G will be delta H minus T delta S. So delta S will be delta H minus delta G per T, which is negative 125 minus 40.73 divided by 298 which is negative 0 0.56 kilojoule per k mole or negative 560 j per k mole because delta s is negative 560 j per k mole so whether this represent an increase or decrease in randomness it decrease in randomness Aluminum and copper can react in redox reactions. One common reaction is between aluminum metal and copper to nitrate. Write a balance equation for the reaction of aluminum with copper to nitrate, including state symbol. So aluminum solid when it reacts with copper and O2 and O3 to copper nitrate, which is aqueous, will produce Cu and a L N O three three aqueous. This would be two and this would be three and this would be two. The rate of this reaction can be measured using UV spectroscopy with the disappearance of the blue green color of copper to nitrate when strips of solid ammonium are added to the solution. Calculate the instantaneous rate at 50 second in units of s to the power negative 1 using the experimental data showing a notation on the graph above so when i do okay so that would be like this okay so the uh, rate at the rate at 50 second would be the slope at the tangent tangent at 50 seconds so that would be delta y per delta x which is 0 minus 0 0.708 okay and then 117 minus so this actually because i cannot draw with the 
ruler so this should be around here okay should be around here which is 170 minus 0 that would be negative 0 0.0061 s to the power negative 1 suggest two changes to the experiment that would increase the reaction of rate you can maybe increase the surface area because it's using strip what strip a uh, strip of solid aluminum and you can also increase the concentration concentration of copper of copper to nitrate or you can also increase the temperature using the graph below deduce the order of reaction with respect to cu plus as you can see if the graph is a straight line passing through the origin the reaction is first order with respect to the reactant so this would be first order if the reaction is zero order with respect to al state the rate expression for the reaction of aluminum with copper nitrate and calculate the rate constant specifying the correct unit for k so if it's respect to the al zero order therefore the rate will be k cu2 plus right because cu2 plus is the first order therefore k is rate divided by concentration of cu2 plus so rate is 0 0.11 mole decimeter to the power negative 3 s to the power negative 1 divided by concentration of cu2 plus that is 0 0.05 mole per decimeter to the power negative 3 i got it from here okay this is the point this is the point that i took or i used so that would be this one finish this one finish this one finish so this would be 2.2 s to the power negative 1 if solid copper and solid aluminum were used to create a galvanic electrochemical cell identify the following so aluminum and copper aluminum is more reactive so this one will experience oxidation and this one will be reduction oxidation always happen at the anode and this always happen at the cathode reduction so the anode material will be aluminum and then cathode will be copper half reaction at the anode at the anode oxidation oxidation is loose electron so al al3 plus plus 3 electron this one reduction for copper copper cu2 plus plus 2 electron produce cu metal identify the redu reducing and oxidizing agent in the aluminum and copper to nitrate reducing it means oxidation oxidizing means redu reduction so reducing agent reducing agent is oxidation which is aluminum and then oxidizing agent is reduction which is cu2 plus nitrate ion can also react in redox reaction an example of unbalanced half reaction for nitrate ion is an o3 minus produce an o2 minus deduce the oxidation state for this two and o3 minus so this negative six because negative two times three equal to negative one so n will be plus five and o2 minus so this negative four because o negative two times two and this should be equal to negative one so plus three did use the balance half redox reaction and o3 minus produce an o2 minus we need to balance the number of oxygen here is three here is, is two so we can add by uh, adding water so we need one more o so now o is three here is three as well but h is not balanced so we need to add 
for h plus right here uh sorry 2h plus okay so now the charge here is negative one negative one and we've got two more plus right here so we can balance by adding two electron organic reactions can transform one functional group into another state the reagents required for molecule a to turn into molecule b as you can see there is oh right here so the reagent of course will be water because it has oh and h state the iopac name for molecule b so one two three alcohol at number two so propan two all molecule b is a member of an alcohol homology series state the molecular formula for the next member in the alcohol homology series for molecule b it's c 3 h 8 o for homology series you need to add ch2 so now it becomes c4 h10 o just add ch2 for the molecule identified in c deduce with a reason if this boiling point is higher or lower than the than that of molecule b molecule c molecule c identify in c c for h10o has higher boiling point as it has stronger intermolecular force which is london dispersion force okay they both contain alcohol right c4h10o and c3h8o so both contains hydrogen bond both contain uh, dipole dipole force and also london dispersion force so to differentiate between these two london dispersion force that is depending on the higher number of molecular weight so c4h10o has bigger mass or molecular weight compared to c3h8o Therefore, London dispersion force in C4H10O is stronger compared to C3H8O because it has higher or bigger molecular weight. Molecule B is treated with an oxidizing agent, acidified potassium dichromate and heat. Deduce the structure of the product molecule C that is formed. So this is secondary alcohol. When it is oxidized, will produce ketone. So C H or oh, that would be here. C H three C double bond O C H three which is propanol. If methyl two methyl propanol two methyl propanol that would be C O H C H three C H three was treated with acidified potassium dichromate and heat suggests a reason why there will be no reaction because it is a tertiary alcohol tertiary alcohol because tertiary alcohol does not undergo oxidation reaction deduce the index of hydrogen deficiency for molecule a b and c molecule a b and c the uh, hydrogen deficiency ihd okay molecule a it has double bond where is molecule a it has double bond okay so ihd will be one molecule b doesn't have double bond so it means ihd is zero and for c it has one double bond so ihd will be one because one double bond between any atoms will give ihd one the below infrared IR spectrum was obtained from one of molecules A, B, C. A, B 
or C. Using section 26 of the data booklet, deduce with a reason which molecule produced the IR spectrum below. So this there is 1700 to 1750, which is C double bond O. So that would be molecule C S C double bond O present at 1700 to 1750 centimeter to the power negative one, which is ketone. For one H NMR spectrum of molecule B, state the number of chemical signal that would be present. So molecule B, it's C H three C H O H and C H three. So this and this would be the same, and this B and this C, that would be three signals. Two bromobutane reacts with hydroxide ions in a nucleophilic substitution reaction. Identify the electrophile, nucleophile, and leaving group in the reaction of two bromobutane with hydroxide ions. Electrophile would be two bromobutane. Nucleophile would be nucleophile would be OH minus, and leaving group would be Br. So electrophile is an electron deficient and then for nucleophile electron rich that's why oh minus and the nucleophile it's uh, sorry it's living group it's uh, bromine because uh, nucleophile will substitute this uh, bromine the reaction rate was measured at various concentration of hydroxide using the following graph state with a reason whether the reaction is sn1 or sn2 it is sn2 as d reaction is first order with respect to d nucleophile so the graph is linear okay the rate would be halogeno alkane with nucleophile in case if it's sn1 the graph would be like this so this would be nucleophile and then this would be rate because nucleophile doesn't give any effect in the sn1 reaction mechanism Suggest whether a polar protic or aprotic solvent would be required for this reaction, providing an example of such a solvent. It this would be it would be polar aprotic solvent. The example would be ether or acetone. Because the solvent are unable to form hydrogen bond, leaving the nucleophile accessible for the reaction to occur. When this reaction occurs, it resulted a single enantiomeric product. Explain how this would occur by drawing the reaction mechanism. So that would be C with Br and then CH3, CH2, CH3 with H. So the nucleophile here, okay, will attack the C here. So it will form the intermediate which has both OH and then leaving group so CH2 CH3 and then not right here H and then CH3 so then the leaving group will leave okay I forget the arrow right here so it will produce alcohol and then D leaving group ion which is br minus state the instrument's name that would distinguish a racemic mixture from a single enantiomeric product that would be polarimeter because it can measure the rotation of polarized light and chiral compounds and mixture identify the chiral carbon in butan 2 all and draw the structure in its VSEPR representation. So it's butan to all. So C, CH3, 
CH to CH3. So this would be OH and H. So this would be chiral carbon. And the uh, structure in is VS EPR. This how it will represent. It can represent. Spectral analysis of molecules can be useful in identifying structure. Determine the empirical formula of a molecule with the following present composition by mass. So first mole of C, we can do 69.7 times 1 over 12 molar mass of uh, C, which is 5.8. And for H, that would be 11.7 times 1, point, uh, 1 divided 1. 0 0.01 which is 11.58 and for O would be 18.18.6 times 1.16 mole atomic relative mass of oxygen which is 1.16 so we divide with the smallest number 1.16 divided by 1.16 we've got 5 this around 10 and this obviously 1 so the empirical formula will be C5H10O. State the molecular formula for this molecule if this mass spectrum indicates a molecular ion at 86. So this also 86. Therefore, the empirical formula will be the same with the molecular formula, which is C5H10O. State the index of hydrogen deficiency. So IHD would be half. 2c plus 2 minus h which is half 2 times 5 plus 2 minus 10 which is 1. An invert spectrum was obtained of for this molecule using section 26 of the data booklet to identify two possible molecular structure consistent with the spectrum below. So 26, this one 26. So we know this would be C double bond O. So C double bond O, as we know, the formula is C5H10O, which is CnH2NO. So what about the structure? So CnH2NO is the uh, general formula of ketone and al. The height so we can actually um, draw the uh, formula or structural formula of ketone and aldehyde with c5 c5 that would be um, pentan 3 on so c ch2 ch3 c ch2 ch3 double bond o this pentan Three on so C five H ten O. We can also draw a structure for aldehyde, which is pentanol C H three C H two C H two C H two C O H, which is pentanol. So the total will be C five H ten O. Anything that should be C five H ten O, as long as it's ketone and aldehyde, you can also draw pentan 2 on or 3 methyl butanol or 2 methyl butanol but the question asking only to structure explain why the infrared spectrum alone is not useful in confirming the identity of this molecule because ir only identify functional group right so the type of group the type of bond that exists which is CH3, maybe C double bond O, or maybe OH. So it cannot provide the structure of molecule. The following data was collected from one HNMR spectrum of the molecule using section 27. This section 27. Explain how this data can distinguish between the molecules suggested in D, stating the confirmed identity of the molecule. 
So 2.40, 2.40, we can tell it's a uh, ketone. Uh, yeah, 2.4. So it's more 2.4, uh, so it falls into ketone. So maybe propanone. So at least this one we know. Ketone. And then 1.06 would be CH3. Okay, CH3. So let's go for pentan. Let's check pentan 3 on. Okay, pentan 3 on. That would be CH3, CH2, C double bond O. CH2, CH3. As we know, so this would be the same. This would be the same. This would be the same. So A and then B. A would be 6. B would be 4. You can see CH3, which is A. Sorry, CH3, which is this one, 6. And then the one that attached with the C double bond or integration is 4. So it's 4 right here. So it's pen, tan, 3, on. Predict with a reason the spin-spin coupling that would be observed for the HNMR signal at 1.06 ppm. 1.06, it's a uh, CH3. And CH3 is next to the CH2. So means the spin-spin uh, coupling would be triplet as it is CH3 is next to a CH2 group. All right. So that's all for the explanation for another example of prediction question of paper two, higher level IB chemistry. Again, these questions are not guaranteed that would be appear in the exam instead it's very highly uh, it is highly recommended for you to do these questions uh, because it follows the ib exam style question so you can treat this as a mock exam to check whether you are ready for the exam or not if you find this video is helpful so please don't forget to subscribe and let your other friend knows about my channel to support me thank you for watching and bye